Hi everybody. Welcome to the second video in this series of videos about using the tools in Polypad to show factors of numbers. So in the first video, which you can see the last part of up on the screen here, we created a group of 180 number tiles and created different rectangular arrays of the 180 to find all the factor pairs of 180. In this video, we're going to use the prime factor circles in Polypad to also find the factor pairs of 180. So I'm going to I'm going to clear this canvas. I've saved it, so I'm comfortable clearing it. And I'm going to go to the prime factor circles. Now this would not be the first time I would be using the prime factor circles with students. They would have explored using the prime factor circles and learning about prime numbers and prime factorization. So they would understand how these work that if you take 18 and you drag the 2 and pull it apart, that you've made two numbers that multiply to give 18. 2 times 9 is 18. Or we can pull out the 3, and I could pull out another 3, and there's 2 times 9 again. Or we can show 3 times 6. So they would have spent some time with the prime factor circles. And what I would do is, as a class, I would create the number 180. If this was the same day or a day after I had done the number tiles of 180, I might choose a different number so the factor pairs aren't totally fresh in their head, but for the purposes of continuity of the videos, I'm going to do 180 here. And I might show them that I'm going to pull out a couple to make a factor pair. There's 6 times 30 is 180, or maybe I pull out three of them. Ooh, 45 times 4. And I would stop there, and then I would have them go off and work in pairs or on their own, depending on your your preference, and use a uh, prime factor circle of 180 to try to find all the factor pairs of 180 by doing this pulling apart and putting together. So I would send them off uh, to work on that, and after um, some time for them to work, we'd come back and have a class discussion, and students could share some of the factor pairs that they saw. But I would, I would structure the conversation in the following way to show how to use the prime factor circles. So I'm going to I'm going to close this here, and I would first ask students to share one in which one of the factors was just a single prime factor. And maybe the first one students would share would be 2 and 90. And I would show how I'm going to build that by pulling out the 2, and there's 2 and 90. And then I'd ask students to share another one, and I imagine some students would have 3 and 60. And then students might share that they also had 5 as one of them, 5 and 36. And then those are all the ways to pull out one prime factor to make a factor pair. So I would label this as pulling out one, and then there's four left. And I'd continue on. I'm going to zoom out a little bit to give myself a little more room. And I would then ask students, all right, let's see if, we, if, if they made any where they pulled out two, and there was three left. So I'd continue that, and students would share. And I'll very quickly show the ones that they might share, pulling out an orange and an orange. Oh, I missed it. An orange and an orange. There we go. And then I'll take the 180 and copy it down. And we could pull out an orange and a green. Right? And notice I'm not moving the 180 because I want to continue to have continue to be able to have the 180 to copy it and paste it as we go. We could do um, orange and blue. And I do find myself talking about these as colors, and I think that helps for students to to you know, to be able to uh, talk about these both as the prime factors or the numbers. So we could do three and three, or green and green, as pulling out two. And I think the one more that we could make is, which one are we missing here? Uh, we could do the green and the blue. All right, we don't have that one yet. So there's five ways to pull out two of them. I would talk as a class about how we know that we've got them all, if any other students had ones where they pulled out two. Um, and we have all these factor pairs. Now, I want to save this canvas here, so I'm going to save, the, save this as a copy. I'll call this 180B. Now that I've changed it a different name, let me save it again. And I'm going to go back over here to the one that we had made as a class using the number tiles. And in this video, we had talked about how when we had the 12 by 15, and we moved this down a little bit. We got 13, didn't go into 180 evenly. 14, oh, there's, there's the 12 was here. And 13 didn't work, and 14 didn't work, but 15 did. 
15 goes into 180 evenly. But that was just the rectangle rotated, uh, the 12 by 15, that was rotated, and those fit right on top of each other. And then students, I think, have a pretty good intuitive sense that all these rectangles can be rotated to create another factor pair, but it's just the same numbers the other way around, right? So here's 10 by 18 is that one, right? Alternatively, I think there's great value in continuing to build the factor pairs with the prime factors here. So I would continue this conversation as a class and say, what happens if we think about pulling out three and there's two left? So I might ask students if they have any factor pairs on theirs where they pulled out three, right? So we could have orange, orange, blue is a way to pull out three. Let's keep doing this, right? What if we do orange, orange, green, right? And I do think for, for the most concrete students, talking about pulling out colors and finding combinations of colors is a lot easier to think about it than if they saw the prime factorization of the number. So let's keep going. We could do green, green, blue. Uh, we could do green, green, orange. Do you have that one yet? I don't think so. And I think the final one might be one of each, right? Do we have one of each? I don't think so. And I'd certainly be having this conversation as a class, right? Asking students to find ones to pull out, take a look at their canvas that they made. What do they see? And at this point, we'd stop and talk about what do we notice between these two sets, right? And I think students would share, and they might have been ready to share as I was building this, that 4 and 45, oh, it's right there. And 6 and 30 is down here. 18 and 10, 9 and 20, and 15 and 12. And we talk about how pulling out 2 and leaving 3 is very much connected to pulling out 3 and leaving 2. Those are just sort of the opposite of each other. Um, and just like in the rectangular arrays that we looked at, we looked at each rectangular rectangle could be rotated to create the same factor pair. It's a very similar idea that we have here. Pulling out 2, leaving 3 is almost like the flipped rectangle of pulling out 3 and leaving 2. So I might uh, erase these lines to clean up my polypad a little bit. And I continue here and say, all right, are there any ways we can pull out four and leave one? Maybe I'd give students a few minutes to talk to their partner or person next to them about what they might notice here. But I think there's value in actually doing it. So let's go. We'll pull out one. I need a little more room here. Two, three, four. There's a way to pull out four and one. Let's do it again. All right. Let's do, what was that, orange? Or, let's do orange. Orange, green, green is a way to pull out four. And then one more we could do, what do we got? Green, green, blue, orange, right? And certainly these are pair, uh, matched up two and 90, two and 90, three and 60, three and 60, five and 36, five and 36, right? Choosing one and leaving four left is the opposite of choosing four and having one left. I wouldn't get into any combinatoric vocab or any other things about choosing here, but I think just seeing this in factor pairs is, is really uh, a cool activity for students to go through and build some of those ideas that they're going to see much later on in, in their math career. I might s stop here and say what, what factor pair is missing from our list, and students might see that we don't have one and 180, and I would talk about ways that we could build that, right? That what if we don't choose any and just leave all five? Well, if we don't choose any, then it's just 180. There it is. But what if we choose all of them, right? What if alternatively we choose all of them, right, and have none left? Well, if we choose all of them and have none left, then this will go over here and we'll say we could choose one, two, Three seems silly, but it's good to see. Four, five, yeah, there's none left. We made 180, right? But there's a number missing here, right? It's it's the, the number that goes with 180 to multiply to give 180. And that's in the prime factor circle. There's the number one. So I put the one here just to complete the visual. Here we go, right? And so you have all the factor pairs of 180. Certainly every pair is is there twice. So if we're just interested in the factors, we would focus on those 
factor pairs, but I think there's value in students seeing the combinatoric connection between making choices here. I would then have students go explore this on their own, maybe give them a range of numbers to, to choose from uh, and make a similar display to uh, find factor pairs of a number. So this is the second way to use these tools to find factor pairs. In the third video, I'm going to talk about how to use prime factor circles to build all the factors of a number using trees in that. So I encourage you to check that out if you're interested. Thanks for watching. Please uh, share other ways that you've been using these tools to uh, explore number theory concepts. Mm -hmm.